What makes the Pentium E6500K so interesting is that it has a fully unlocked multiplier for overclocking. Now let's take a look how it compares against the E8600 which is the fastest Core 2 Duo and we can see in Far Cry 173 versus 133 and in Doom 3 221 versus 168. Having an unlocked multiplier is nice, but is this processor worth getting? So we will overclock it. We will check if we can match the performance of the E8600 and then we will have a look at prices and availability and I will tell you which one is the one you should be getting. Let's take a look at this system we put together for this video. A micro ATX motherboard from Asus. It is the P5 G41TM LX3. We have a G41 chipset with onboard graphics, two DDR3 memory slots, PCI Express 16X and 21X, as well as PCI and four SATA ports. If it has a BIOS, we will flash it. We have version 0601 from September 2012. The E6500K runs at 2.933 gigahertz with a 1066 megahertz front side bus. We have an unlocked multiplier and only two megabytes of level two cache. In this video, it goes against the E8600 running at 3.33 gigahertz with a 1333 megahertz front side bus. We have a 10X multiplier and three times the level two cache, six megabytes. We're using two two gigabyte DDR3 memory modules from G-Skill for Windows XP 32-bit. This is perfect. Just make sure in the BIOS that it runs at the correct speed. We're using a Western Digital Blue 500 gigabyte partitioned and formatted under Windows 10 so the partitions are aligned. To cool the processor, we're using the Deepcool Gamax 300 and like in most videos, a graphite thermal pad instead of thermal paste. The video card is the NVIDIA GeForce GDX 285. Under Windows XP, this card is very fast and it should uh, ensure that we're not holding back the processors. To install Windows XP off a USB flash drive, I'm using the Easy to Boot Project version 1.b1 because I found the latest version doesn't work with Windows XP anymore. After Windows is installed, we're using the Snappy Driver Installer Origin project to install all the drivers. I untick the drivers for the graphics card. I will install that manually. We have the NVIDIA GeForce Driver 340.52, which is the latest version for the GDX 285. And now let's start overclocking the E6500K. The first test I wanted to do was configuring the chip with the same frequencies as the E8600. So we have a 10x multiplier. I increased the front side bus to 1333 megahertz. So it runs at the same 3.33 gigahertz clock speed. And we can see in Far Cry the E8600 is still faster, 173 versus 157 and in Doom 3 221 versus 197. So what is the reason? It is the larger level 2 cache on the E8600, uh, 6 megabytes compared to just 2. Next up I'm raising the multiplier to 11x. The E6500K now runs at 3.67 gigahertz and it does get faster, but it's still not able to catch the E8600. We have a score of 166 in Far Cry and 209 FPS in Doom 3. 3.833 gigahertz with a multiplier of 11.5 was next. I also increased the voltage to the processor. Unfortunately, the machine was not stable in both Far Cry and Doom 3. We are getting crashes. So guys, what is my verdict on the E6500K with the unlocked multiplier? Interesting CPU, that is for sure. Maybe back in the day, uh, it was decent value. Now, however, prices are quite different. The main issue is that the E8600 can be purchased from AliExpress for around 12 or $13. And the E6500K, I couldn't find it uh, available at all anymore. I bought this one maybe a year or two ago. And yeah, we saw even with maxing out the CPU voltage, we could not overclock the E6500K high enough to match the E8600. And yeah, the E8600 can also be overclocked 
uh, and then gets even faster. So um, yeah, as interesting as this process is uh, with the unlocked multiplier, it's actually not something I can recommend. You bet off getting the best one, the E8600. And for underclocking experiments, uh, for example, if you want to build uh, a DOS machine, um, all these uh, CPUs can be uh, underclocked. It's just the overclocking that is locked on most of the LGA775 CPUs. Um, apart from that, yeah, it was a fairly straightforward project using the easy to boot project and the snappy driver installer origin makes installing Windows XP fairly straightforward. And yeah, I like using SSDs. Just make sure uh, it is it has aligned partitions by creating the partition on the Windows 10 machine. And yeah, if you worry about uh, trim and uh, garbage collection, you can just unplug it, plug it into a modern machine with a USB adapter or something like that and run the trim, trim command every few months or something like that. And yeah, guys, uh, a short video. I expected a little bit more with the overclocking. Unfortunately, um, it's not a CPU I can recommend for retro gaming. Go with the E8600. It's the best uh, dual core Core 2 and uh, for retro gaming, uh, yeah, a nice piece of history. And that's really it for this video, guys. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments down below. I do read every comment. Uh, I've been absent uh, quite a bit. It's been a hectic year with work, but I do my best to uh, do a video every now and then. And yeah, if there's anything specific uh, you want me to look at, keep those suggestions coming. I will do my best to make a video. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And I shall see you soon with another one.